Hello, today's topic is copy on write technology, <coughs> or COW, which seems to be a terribly appropriate term for uh, working in India. We have a lot of them. Um, and my first exposure to copy on write technology was when I was at Sun Microsystems. Uh, the ZFS uh, file system was uh, coming out, and it was all very exciting. And it just seemed to me that it was the ideal thing that I needed to add robustness uh, to the database that I was working on. And in fact, I've noticed that uh, Oracle is also making uh, good use of copy and write technology as well these days. Um, the thing about copy and write, it's very simple. You uh, just never update uh, some data in place. So uh, every time you want to update a record, you allocate a new area <clears throat> and write it there, which means you have to change the reference. And so you end up with your data blocks being, allocate, being organized in a tree structure with a uh, single root. Now, this works very nicely for transactional processing. Um, during a commit, you just flush all your dirty blocks out to disk and the last thing you update is the root block. And what we did in Agile Wiki 5, and 4 as well, is we allocate, pre-allocate, two disk areas for the root block. And when we write out the root block to disk, we use the areas alternately. So you don't overwrite the last valid disk block. You write, overwrite the other one, which is older. Um, and when you write them out, we include both a checksum and a timestamp. So when the program crashes or is terminated uh, you, and you restart, or a normal start, there's no differentiation, uh, you read both areas and you check to see which ones are valid. And if you have more than one valid root block, then you use the older. Um, this then gives you the state of the database at the time of the last valid commit. So, you know, writing crash-proof program using this technique is very easy and transaction processing is also very easy. Um, there's another plus and that is that you're dealing with variable length block size. There's no problem. So doing things like B-trees is very nice. Um, and we do use a lot of B-trees in this product. Um, the downside is the disk space management. Uh, because you're constantly allocating new space, uh, you have to uh, handle the potential issue of fragmentation. And the way we do that is that we always round up uh, the size of the data, being, data area being allocated to the next larger uh, Fibonacci number. And the nice thing about that is when you uh, coalesce adjacent uh, free blocks for reallocation, more often than not you end up with another Fibonacci number. So uh, it works very nicely and we don't have to deal with fragmentation. Okay, so uh, it, there is one other complication with uh, copy and write, and that is, you know, when you free a block, you don't want to reuse it until after the, uh, the commit. So you're not only tracking free blocks, those blocks that have been freed during the current transaction, but also available blocks, and you have to make the distinction. Um, upon the commencement of a new transaction, the free blocks from the previous transaction then are moved over to the uh, pool of available blocks, and at that point they are coalesced with adjacent blocks. Uh, so, you know, this is all very simple and uh, also gives us variable length blocks, uh, easy transaction processing, and uh, it turned out we don't have a problem with uh, fragmentation. So, it makes for a very nice system. Thanks.